is Sir Vince Cable. He's the former leader of the Liberal Democrats. He's also the former business secretary. And he was in office uh, when this was all happening from May 2010 uh, through to 2015. Uh, good uh, morning to you, Sir Vince. Morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Been lots of criticism, first of all, of uh, Sir Ed Davey, the now Lib, Lib Dem leader. Um, he was the uh, uh, post office minister, effectively, uh, uh, at the time. Um, and he got lots of letters from Alan Bates, the subject of this ITV drama, Mr. Bates versus the post office, saying, look, please, can you help? Please, can you help? And his response was basically, well, I've asked the post office and they think everything's fine, so there's nothing I can do. Um, does Ed Davey have something to answer for? And do you? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, every every minister, and there were large numbers of ministers, Labour, coalition, conservatives, who were in office when these abuses were happening. So in that sense, you know, we all have some responsibility. But trying to point, point the finger at particular individuals, I don't think it's particularly helpful. I and mean, this is election year, people are trying to make political capital out of it. The, the thing we really need to focus on is trying to help the, the victims of this miscarriage of justice. There's a terrible miscarriage of justice. They're still suffering. Uh, and unblocking the process of giving them exoneration so that they can get compensation. The fact that today's government can't even deal with that problem just shows how difficult it is. Yes. And the underlying issue, um, which has got nothing to do with individuals, is that it, in its wisdom in the 1980s, Parliament made the post office a fully independent commercial operation and took ministers completely out of any operational role. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, when we were in office, but also after and before, uh, there were large numbers of cases in the courts. And, and of course, ministers were told by their civil servants, you can't interfere in ongoing legal action. So, you know, it, that, it's that easy for people... Hands. I'm not quite sure why oh, it being, you know, uh, an independent commercial operation made it any harder, because there was still oversight. I mean, the fact that we still had a postal affairs minister um, it tells you tells you that. The government still effectively, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, owned it a lot through a lot of this time. But this is the issue in terms of no individual is responsible because everyone's responsible. And this is the same problem we have when we have an NHS trust scandal, when babies die, uh, when we have... a. Uh, uh, you know, problems in schools, wherever, whatever the problem is, it's I mean, the, 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 you know, the blood, the contaminated blood scandal. No one person's responsible because everyone's responsible. But isn't that the issue? That we do need to have personal oh, yeah. responsibility. Well, right. And people I mean, working in these jobs do need to have a duty of care to people. You know, people are paid big money to be either senior civil servants or run a big organisation like the post office or or to, uh, you know, uh, run, run uh, IT services. They're paid millions of pounds from, from taxpayers. Uh, you know, all of these people have, you know, a, and, and including ministers, they have a duty of care to these people. Well, you're quite right. The, the you know, responsibility is widely disused. It is a terrible failure by the British state and British government, you know, government with a small g, and also a terrible failure by the criminal justice system, because, I mean, if there was doubt, why were hundreds of people being, being found guilty? I mean, this, this is bizarre and, and, and appalling. So, yeah, there is wide responsibility. Who was specifically responsible and who should accept the responsibility uh, for, you know, making a public apology and, and any action that follows from it? That's the purpose of this public inquiry, which is taking place at the moment. But even but we've even seen the chair of the public inquiry in the last year basically pleading for the government to get on and pay compensation. If four people committed suicide, those families will have been left, uh, you know, not not just losing a loved one, but also out of pocket. You know, 700 plus families, you know, lost their livelihoods, lost their jobs, had to pay money that they did not owe. The post office still sitting on that. There were, you know, chief executives and directors of the post office who got lovely big bonuses because of all the profits the post office was making. Well, some of that was the hundreds of millions of pounds that they'd wrongly clawed back from people who they'd accused of uh, of, of stealing from uh, the, the post office when they hadn't done anything of the sort. I mean, where's that money going? Well, you're quite right about the human tragedies. I mean, I was aware of this because I had individual constituents who were affected by it, and I talked to the families, tried to do what I can to help them. So, you know, I, I do understand the human angle of it. 
Um, and you're quite right also that the post office has behaved extremely badly and it's used its commercial freedom uh, in a way that it shouldn't have done. But the key problem now is to make sure that the victims of this um, scandal, uh, whoever is ultimately responsible, should be now dealt with humanely and quickly, and that involves getting the compensation. But that's only and going to, to get compensation, they have to be exonerated. It's a yes. legal issue. That's the, the and there's, there's talk about yeah how you can actually do that because it has to you know these private prosecutions going back to CPS and things. But this is the thing. I mean, a the private prosecutions is a big question mark. The post office, I think, is no longer be able to do that. But but this is the thing. There are two issues here. One is helping the people now and doing it urgently and not waiting any longer. They've waited many many years to be exonerated publicly and to get compensation. And by the way, you know the 151 million quid so far paid out ain't even touching the sides of how these people's lives were ruined. But 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 also dealing with what happened back in the past and making sure it doesn't happen again. You know, this old phrase we've heard lots of times, Vince, lessons learned, and they really are learned, we know that, but that's because people don't face individual culpability and responsibility, and that is what is necessary. We've got a, you know, the chief, former chief executive. Um, look, I'm sure she didn't personally oversee this and go, oh, yes. You know, let's try and prosecute a load of innocent post office uh, sub supermasters and mistresses. Of course she didn't. However, uh, Paula Venels, you know, got a CBE because of how, oh, how brilliantly she did her job at, this, at the post office over 2012 to 2019. There were senior people there who absolutely knew that there was a flaw in their, their computer system and they carried on with the prosecutions. It was being flagged up again and again and they carried on. I'm sorry, on no basis should she still have her CBE. Would you join those calling for her to hand that back? No, I, I wouldn't. She has issued a collective apology and oh, a very that's sincere all right, apology. Then. But tell, that, issue, tell that to the widows and widowers and the children who lost their parents. About, the issue about how much she knew and was responsible for is something the public inquiry are trying to establish. I mean, there is an issue know. about what the so-called computer glitch was. What was happening, as I understand it, and I don't think anybody yet fully understands it, is that 10,000 uh, uh, 10, computer operations were working perfectly well. Uh, they failed in respect of uh, several hundred, I, I think as many as 900. Uh, and it seems to do with the fact that, that the post office managers were told that they had exclusive access to the computer terminals, yeah. but they didn't. And somebody else was interfering with it. Now, whether this was the computer company or low-level managers, whether it was an accident or whether it was criminal, this is why the police are investigation, this is something we need to establish. And once that's been established, it will be clear how much the senior management within the post office should have intervened well, at the time. It came before the board repeatedly, by all accounts. But the other thing is, again, you've got to... You, presumably, over the years, there will have been people working the post office, even they've been vetted, who will have defrauded, will have stolen and, and uh, or made mistakes, and those people have been prosecuted. If you suddenly get a massive increase in the number of these cases, would you not be going, well, hold on a minute, either there's something going horribly wrong with our vetting, and we've suddenly suddenly hiring an awful load of people who worked for years without any problems and now suddenly turned very, very, you know, they're all, they're all criminals. Well, you know, would you would you not at least as Chief Secretary be expected to go, we need to look into this, something's going wrong. And at the very least, once there was some query over, is there a problem with the computer system, not carrying on with more of those prosecutions, there are so well, many that, chances exactly. for them to rectify this and they didn't take those chances. Well, those are exactly the questions that were being asked. I mean, I recall being visited by a delegation from the Postmasters Federation about halfway through my term in office. And I think at that point they had about 50 cases. And I was very concerned, as, as the postal ministers were concerned. And I think what happened is that we insisted on the post office carrying out a forensic audit. Of, of um, their own work. Yeah, brilliant. That worked no, well. of, of the way the post office was handling these cases, whether the, the sums added up, uh, it didn't solve the problem. It no, then became... but isn't that weird? Late. Asking the people who were doing it to check, are you doing it right? And you're surprised that they didn't come back and go, yeah, we think we've made a horrible mistake. Come on. Well, as, as we thing. said earlier, this was not an, uh, an operation that we controlled. Perhaps we should have controlled it. Well, but you told Perhaps me you the told them to do a forensic yeah. audit, yeah. but you didn't control. Did you or didn't you? Well, the, the, the ministers and officials who were 
trying to respond to the problems that were emerging were using whatever powers they had to get the post office to behave properly. And as you said a few moments ago, this involved operating through the board, then the board was supposed to be overseeing it rather than the Department of Business. So we were we were trying to get them to address the problems because post office masters were coming to us and, and we were beginning to see the scale of the problem. So uh, with all due uh, respect, that sounds like a cop out to me. No, the government did not control the operations of the post office. This this is a problem that affected my government. Uh, my predecessors... You, you, could, you, don't, you cannot control well. the post office, but still publicly say, we think there's an issue, we want an independent auditor to go in and look at this. And you didn't do that. You said to the post office, could you have a look at what you're doing? Oh, and you've given yourselves a clean bill of health. Excellent, fine, nothing to see here. That's a well, joke. We, we, the issue which ministers face today, which is a decade after we were involved, was how to stop the post office of pursuing prosecutions and pre preventing these exonerations. I mean, the, today's government has got exactly the same problem that we do, that they can't just intervene and say, stop it, do it. The, the, the post office has very considerable legal powers that Parliament gave them. Perhaps it shouldn't. Yeah. Perhaps Parliament well, made a... We could take those powers back. Years ago. But that is the, the system under which governments have had to operate. I, I... The, the focus of attention now should be on helping uh, the people who are victims. And it's a terrible miscarriage of no, justice. Yes, but we also need to have a system that stops it happening again to other people. Uh, Savinsky, Cable, I appreciate you coming on at the show, uh, former business secretary at the time of uh, some of the, these prosecutions of, against perfectly innocent people. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, Sam Armstrong, your face has been a picture throughout that. I mean, the, the, the response is, oh, it was all terrible. Oh, nothing we can do. You know, it's a plague on everyone's houses. This is what we hear again and again, doesn't matter what the scandal is. This sort of, oh, we've got no powers, what can we do? We didn't know, well, we sort of did, but we didn't do enough about it. I don't agree with Vince Cable on politics, but for the entirety of my life growing up, I have respected him mm. as a politician that I thought was independent, fair-minded, had a good sense of things, very uh, efficient. No more. What I just witnessed was the most Panglossian, officialese, legalese, disgraceful, yes, minister style, uh, uh, pathetic, not even a defence for what happened under his tenure. I have no respect any longer for Vince Cable. Vince Cable has no place in public life. He sat there in a cushy office while these postmasters had their lives ruined. And to come on here, not even to not apologise, to not say that Paula Venel should have a uh, CBE stripped is a disgrace. He should be ashamed of himself. Is, no more. It is quite extraordinary, isn't it? Well, I'd love to hear from you as well. My question today is, who do you blame for the post office horizon scandal? Tell us why and tell us what should happen now. You can give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Text on 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. You've been getting in touch. Connor says, I blame Ed Davey. Uh, Tom says, Fujitsu and the post office team that tested the software rolled it out when it was not fit for purpose. That's who he blames. And Mark says, where do we start? There seems to be so many who knew but kept their mouth shut. They were all complicit. That's the issue, isn't it? Uh, you've also been getting in touch uh, on the phones. Keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Shane from Edinburgh. He wants to talk about this as well. Uh, good morning to you, Shane. Good morning, Julia. Thanks. I blame the Post Office Board and Fujitsu. At yeah. various times, this issue has come before the Post Office Board and a corporate decision has been made to keep up the charade of lying when they knew that this software was faulty, claiming that these losses were real, were recoverable from sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses. People were ruined, they had people killing themselves, and there wasn't room for one decent person on the Post Office Board to put their foot down and say, no, we know this software is faulty, we will discontinue this action, but instead they continue with malicious exactly. prosecutions. They have potentially, I think, uh, the board itself is, uh, the corporately, the post office is guilty of fraud. Various individuals have continued this charade, ruined people, people have killed themselves, mm -hmm. and I think it's an act of pure wickedness well, to you. actually I'm... tell lies like yep. that to get people into serious trouble. Yep. But isn't there room for a decent person in Fujitsu to come. I know someone did when this when these court applications were being made yeah. come forward and say quite categorically the post office did not have 
sole control over these terminals. We could access these terminals yeah. remotely whilst the sub postmaster was working in his post office and he wouldn't even know it was happening. Yeah, exactly. Now, that that, that's, is, as always, though, there are always people who knew and it just, you need one good person to come forward and they did not. Um, Shane, thank you so much for your call. You absolutely nailed it. You know rather more about this than most politicians, I, I wonder.